back again to another Java short tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to extend very briefly on my previous tutorial, in which I used, in which I combined two different types of layout into uh, one particular layout. Uh, last time I used the J panel to combine a grid layout with a border layout. Um, and how, what I'm going to show in this video is how I can make the code more efficient. Because the problem here is, is that, okay, we're going to have uh, the border layout and then we're going to create a panel and add some controls to that. So, especially with large layouts, it becomes uh, very disorganized and very chaotic at some point. So what I'm going to show you how to do is how you can take uh, the J panel as a separate class and therefore distribute your code a bit better over your program. Okay, so let's create another class. In this case, I'm going to call it uh, swing example 4 1. Finish. Uh, swing example 4 1 does not have a main method because the main method is located in example 4 and it's going to stay there. Uh, swing example 4 1 is also not going to be a J frame but it's going to be a J panel. Therefore, extends J panel. Yeah. Uh, just like my J frame, I'm going to use my constructor to set the layout. So, swing example 4.1. Um, I, since a J panel doesn't have a size, I can't invoke set size. I, since it doesn't have a close button, I also don't need to invoke the uh, default close operation. Um, I can, however, set the layout of the uh, applica of the uh, J panel. So in this case, that would be the grid layout I used last time with a size of two by two. Okay, now it becomes simply a matter of migrating the code over from my previous example. So first of all, the J panel gets to go for now because I'm going to do something else. Uh, these buttons are going to be part of my J panel, so I'm just going to cut them and paste them inside my J panel class. Which also means that the initialization, and well, since the J panel is gone, so does this, the initialization will also have to move to my J panel class. And since this class now serves as a J panel, they also have to be added there to the J panel. So I can copy over my add code as well. Um, since in this particular case the class itself is already a J panel, I don't need to create a separate J panel and add my controls to that. So like with the J frame, in my previous class the J frame already was a J frame and therefore I can directly add my controls. I can now directly add my buttons to the class itself, thus the J, uh, which is the J panel. Okay, so I have set my layout to grid layout, I have initialized my buttons, I have actually added them to the class itself, which is a J panel. Okay, so that pretty much uh, finishes our work here. Okay, going back to my previous class, uh, what I have left is, well, my, my standard J frame stuff, my border layout, the text field I've added to the border layout, and the panel that I've added. And, well, this line actually is a bit redundant, or I can modify it. Well, in this case, I'll just delete it and write it again. So, what if I want to add this J panel I've just created to this border layout? So, how do I do that? Well, I will simply create an instance of my string example 4.1, which is essentially a J panel. Not just, just a J panel like I've created in my previous example, but a J panel with all the controls I want on it already on it. Why? Because the moment I create an instance of this J panel, the layout and all the buttons and controls are already set. Which leaves me to just create an instance of this over here and then say, okay, I'm going to add this custom J panel I created to the border layout center slot of the J-frame, and that's it. So basically, by migrating all of the button code to this separate class and putting it on a J-panel there, which is the class itself, I can basically reduce the code in this class to simply a line of creating an instance of that custom J-panel and adding it to the J-frame. As a matter of fact, when I run this, the end result is exactly the same 
as with my previous example. Just to prove that this indeed works, let me just for a moment comment out the lines in which I create the instance of my custom J panel and add it to the layout. You will indeed see it's now completely gone. Why? Because all those buttons are part of a different class which I didn't instantiate and didn't add to the J frame. So let's put it back again. Show one more time, and there it is. So basically what you should do if you write large applications with large GUIs is you should split up your GUI in as many JPanel classes as possible and basically combine those in uh, other JPanels or in a JFrame like in this case to build more complicated GUIs. Okay, that's all I wanted to show in this video, so see you next time. Mm -hmm.